Hello. Sorry about this uh, video being a bit late. Uh, no excuses. I've just been fannying about, pottering, dithering, my favourite subjects. So apologies. Now this subject came about because I was watching a YouTube video called Collinsby Live. And on it they had this night fighter hurricane taxiing around before it took off. I thought, that really stoked my interest. I thought, I've got some hurricanes somewhere. No Spitfires. But hurricanes, yes. So I dug out this one. A hurricane with teeth. My original idea was to do a night fighter. I thought it looked great, all black in this scale. And then it progressed to maybe an Australian one in a natural finish, all the bare metal and the contrast with the canvas. And then I found out that most, I think all, those silver planes were painted. I read somewhere that I think was a one Rhodesian hurricane that was left natural, natural finish. But I really wanted a bit more choice than just the one aeroplane. I do stand corrected on those. There may have been a natural finish Australian hurricane, but I didn't uh, see any to hand. So I thought I'll leave it for now and get on with the build. I can decide when I get to that point. And then when I got to that point, I was still scratching my head on what to do. So I bit the bullet and decided to do the Mediterranean look. Not my ideal colour scheme, Two pooey browns and a bright blue underneath. No. I may have chosen the offerings supplied with the kit, but one was very basic, very bland, and the other one was too garish. So in the end, I ended up creating my own stencils for a hurricane that particularly stood out to me. Other thing I want to mention is I bought a couple of upgrades. The console panel, which is always a must for me if there's an open cockpit or a cockpit where you can see into. And I bought the cannons, an upgrade for the cannons. I wish on hindsight I'd have bought some harnesses. I thought I could make do with the ones that were supplied with the kit. It's a bad call on that. I should have upgraded those. This is a subject in itself. You spend a lot of money on a kit and then you spend nearly the same amount, if not more, buying upgrades. Where do you draw the line? I'd like to bought some resin wheels. I'd like to bought all sorts for the kit. It's, 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 where do you stop? So I'm not going to start waffling on about that because that's a video in itself. So there's loads more I want to say. I should have created some notes, but then that would remind me of work. So let's cut to the chase and see what I did with this hurricane. Surface detail, in some areas it's quite restrained, in some areas it's in your face. Some spurious looking blades. Trying to clear parts. They're always sharp and clear. Accuracy, that's another question. The rubber parts, I say rubber, don't know what material they're made out of, but they're quite firm. Uh, we get an etch fret. We get two options within the kit. So all the parts cleaned up, ready to make a start. 
There are some parts that I haven't bothered with because for the simple reason we're not going to see them. Build them if you want, no one's going to see them. The fuselage parts fitted nicely but the wings I had a bit of trouble with. It turned out to be these little lugs. So I trimmed them flush and they fit beautifully now. Just shows you it doesn't take much to hinder the fit of some parts. Oh, just one more thing before I forget. For some unknown reason, Trumpet have decided to mold the top cowl in position. Now on the old Airfix 124 scale kit, the top cowl was removable. So you got to see the internal framework as well as all the internal gubbins. So Trumpet to supply all this engine, but you ain't gonna see much with the two little quarter panels that they've decided to leave open. I don't know what to do about that yet, but either way, I'm gonna show you how the engine goes together and what it looks like painted. Before I start assembly of the engine, I just want to show you these horrible rubbery harnesses. Ignition leads, ignition harnesses. They're dreadful. So the block here needed quite a bit of clean up and a bit of filler here and there as well. So I've decided to replace these rubbery parts uh, using plastic rod. I just think it's going to be easy to attach and to paint. If you are going to use these bendy parts, the end leads should really attach above the part that they ask you to attach to. You can see they've left little holes for them to attach. I don't think, and I could be wrong, they attach there. They attach above it. So I'm going to paint this generic engine with some Tamiya flat black. With that black paint thoroughly dried, I'm just going to use some graphite lead and burnish it on the surface. Then I've sealed everything in with a gloss varnish and now I'm just going to pick out some details with some Tamiya panel wash. So I'm going to make a start on the cockpit area, got all my parts cleaned up. Uh, the engine firewall, I had some release pin marks to clean up. The easy ones to get at were filled in with filler, no problem. But the ones at the bottom here with the detail where the undercarriage bay is, I've used some plastic card to cover those up. It's a quick fix. Not accurate, but quick. We get some details for the cockpit, i.e. the film for the dials. I'll talk about the console later. And we get some etch fret with the harnesses. With any etch fret, I always clean it with a bit of light fluid. I also mark or score the back of the surface. I find this helps when it comes to gluing these parts. We get a nice little map case to make up. Although I always like to think that Hurricane Pilot puts his sandwiches in here. Peanut butter anyone? On all the side consoles we get lots of little fiddly plastic parts to attach. Yippee. I always use a bit of Tamiya Clear. This just gives me a bit of lead time to fiddle about getting these in the right position. Once that's dried then I fix up permanently with super glue. With the harnesses left on the fret I like to give them a gentle heat, not in direct flame or cook them to death, just a slow, gentle heat. This will make them more pliable, bendable over the plastic parts. So I'm ready to add paint, not to the engine in the right hand corner there, that's just acting as a jig at the moment, waiting for the glue to set on those engine mounts. Now to cut a long story short, I don't know what I was thinking. But I applied silver first, let that dry thoroughly. It was a lack of silver. And then I applied a custom mixture of interior green using Tamiya paints. And before the paint had set, I would scrape it off using a toothpick or my thumbnail. Well, this went pear-shaped badly and it looked awful. So I left it for a day or so, came back and decided just to see if I could salvage it. I used some metalizer to try and burnish and hide the mistakes. The next had a bit of contrast to these parts, hopefully. I'm using olive green oils 
with a thin brush just apply around the edges and then with a dry clean brush try and blend it and smooth it in. Then after that before deciding whether to throw all this lot in the bin I'm using the interior green mixed with a lot of white to create some highlights. Fuel tank's finished. I use these two colours to create the mix. A bit of Tamiya Paneline wash for the sender and the cap. And then just use a bit of uh, AK's engine oil by the filler cap. Bit of a waste of time really because about time the fuse large halves are close together. None of this is going to be seen. Now for the front console. This is what you get supplied with a trim to kit. Bit of film and the transparent part. Looks nicely detailed. Although the glass on the dials, some of them are cloudy. Although if I was going to use these, I'd drill those out. But what I like to do, if I'm going to spend a bit more money on the kit, is always upgrade the consoles, whether the side, front or whatever. Once again, it's just a quick and easy fix. I ended up buying this set. I've misled the placard somewhere. I can't find it anywhere. If I find it, I'll put a quick shot of it in. So this is what you get, all in one bag. I was a bit worried that uh, some of the detail might be scratched off with these bits floating around inside, but thankfully they're okay. The detail on these is beautiful and the spot varnish on the dials really brings them to life. But for some unknown reason, maybe packaging or space saving, they've already released the parts for you. Now looking at the way they've been released, it looks like someone's used a banana. Little tear marks where they've been uh, cut free. Not only that, where they've brought some of the paint off, it's bent some of the metal as well. Now it's not the end of the world, but really, you get some instructions, they tell you that you can create some toggle switches and button switches, but I ain't going to bother with that, I don't think. So I'm sanding the back, once again to help with adhesion to the uh, two surfaces when they come to be glued. Also I've had to sand this to sand out those little bumps where it's been declipped. Once again I'm using Tamiya varnish, just to help with the placement. And then once that's set, I'll go around the edge with some super glue. So with everything finished, I'm now ready to assemble all this lot. I started with the harnesses and I had an issue straight away. Even though I've bent these to shape, I found one part, this Y-shaped harness, didn't fit right, so you can see where I've trimmed it down considerably. I had thought this piece was wrapped around the seat, but I think it's actually attached to the harness above. Whatever the case, I've trimmed it down so it fits properly. When we're messing around doing this, I've taken some of the paint off. So I'm attaching the two side straps and they went on no problem. The two side straps fitting okay, I just need to touch up this top harness. Just using a bit of khaki grey, thin down a bit. Then after that I've added a bit of black and created a very thin wash. With both those applications dried thoroughly, I'm going to do some dry brushing as a highlight with this Tamiya colour. So other than the issue with the harness, both these assemblies went together very well. Thankfully that cockpit assembly looks a lot less generic than the engine assembly. With the glue left to dry overnight, 
I can start fixing these two assemblies to the side of the fuselage. Thankfully we've got some nice big locating lugs and the fit's pretty good. But saying that, harness again. So it was either trim the back of the harness flush to the opening or take some plastic off the actual fuselage. So I did the latter and now it fits perfectly. So now everything's fitting beautifully. All I have to do now is run a bead of glue along the seams of the fuselage. So we can start on the wings, gluing the central undercarriage bay part. Also, I'm going to add the cannon frames as well. Even though I won't be showing them, they may give the wings some structural support. One thing I found when I glued the first upper wing, it didn't quite fit properly. If you look at the other side, it overlaps slightly almost like the top wing sprained. But with a bit of tape and a few clamps, I can hold it in place. So with the glue set on the wings, I can start tidying up. The landing lights are gonna require a lot of work. You can see a lot of steps and gaps. So I'm hopefully gonna rectify or amend these using some plastic card. The nav lights are okay. The cannon shrouds fit quite nicely. Just a tiny bit of work here and there. But I'm gonna leave these shrouds off because I got an upgrade for these cannons which means a bit of work on these shrouds. This is the upgrade I got. Looks very nice. I won't get the parts out of the bags because I'll probably end up losing some of them. The instructions say that I take two mil off the end of the shrouds and then drill a 3.5 mil hole. So I'll get on with that. So using Tamiya tape, cut into two mil widths, right around the end. This will give me a good guide to cut off the excess. And I'm using a 3mm drill bit. And I'm just going to tidy up using a triangular file. So once I'm happy that these machine bits fit into the holes are okay, I should glue these shrouds to the wing. So the nav lights are on. And the shrouds are on. And I've tidied up those landing light areas. So you can see where plastic card has helped me out a lot. So I'm dry fitting the wing assembly to the fuselage and I've noticed there's a step on one of the wings. The other side's okay. The rest of it looks pretty good, a reasonable fit. So I'm just gonna use a bit of plastic card just to raise that inner wing. Now I've added the plastic card and the wing roots nice and flush now. I should glue the wing while it's in position, but I won't glue the whole assembly. I'll do it in two stages. So I'll glue the back and the front first, concentrate on them. With stage one dry, I can go on to the next stage and concentrate on the seam between the fuselage and the inner wing. So the wing's dry and a bit of fettling here and there. The few little gaps that I did have, they were tiny enough to use Vallejo's putty. So I'm gonna have the flaps now. You can show them down if you want, but the detail inside is very poor. There are upgrades out there if you wish, but I'm going to glue them in a closed position. Although saying that, I'll just leave a tiny little gap at the leading edge. Now one thing I need to mention are the landing light parts in the kit. Once again, they seem very generic, or whether the later Hurricanes had a different type of landing light, I don't know. But I'm used to the one with the triangular framework. So once again, Try to scratch my head and think of a quick and easy fix rather than mess around with bits of wire or bits of plastic rod. I thought I'd create some artwork. Once I was happy with that, I reduced it down to 6mm, which is the diameter of the plastic part. And as you can see here, I've printed it out on some clear decal sheet and some silver paper. I've sealed the ink in with some Tamiya Clear. After leaving that a good day or so to dry, I'm going to trim these out and see if they do the job. Yeah, that seems to work, that looks acceptable. I'll let that decal dry and then I'll seal it in with some gloss varnish. So the landing light's in and the lens is attached. 
I'm going to attach the chin now. Thankfully, this is a very good fit. So I've made a start on the exhaust stacks. They come in three parts, very basic and required quite a bit of cleanup. Using these three colours to create a mix, reasonably thick. I prefer using a brush, just gives a better textured surface. Once that's thoroughly dry, then using the same mix but creating a lot lighter colour, an extremely thin wash of that colour is applied. Just apply it loosely across the whole surface and then I'll let that dry. With both those applications so they dry, I'm going to use pastels now. I'm going to use a black and apply it in the shaded areas. After that, I'm going to use a tan pastel and just apply it mainly at the front and here and there at the end of the exhaust stacks. The very last thing to do to these now is use some graphite powder. Apply it by brush or finger, just here and there. I may seal all this in with a coat of matte varnish. I don't know yet. So I'm going to make a start on some of the silvery bits i.e. the undercarriage parts. I'm going to be using these two colours to make a slightly greyish silver, if there is such a thing. And while I'm doing those parts, I might as well paint the engine intake cooler as well. But before I get carried away with painting the undercarriage, I've noticed on some of the photographs, especially on some of the airworthy hurricanes, that there seems to be a pipeline on the actual gear guard. So to try and replicate that, I've got two different widths of uh, copper wire. As for the P-clips, I'm going to use some of this plastic coated rod. Cut to length. So I've added the P-clips, or an interpretation of the P-clips, roughly to follow the layout that I've seen in the photographs. And what I'm going to try and do now is feed this through those clips. Before I apply any silver to these leg guards, I'm just going to apply some grey, just to see if there's any imperfections along this pipe run. Next thing I'm doing now is picking out the detail with some panel wash. I use a custom mix panel wash using these two colours. Before the panel wash goes off, in other words dries, I'm just going to use a very small amount of white spirits just to tidy up around the edges. Before I add anything to these uh, so called rubber tyres, I'm just going to feed the hub through and hopefully not take any paint off because they are an extremely tight fit. So I'm just going to try and see if I can get away with just adding uh, some surface dirt to this tread. Using a MIG pigment with some water. And yes, it looks like a giant skidder, I know. Just run the tread along the surface. Once I've done that, I'll leave it to dry. And then with a slight damp cloth, I'm just going to wipe some of the excess off to show that tread pattern. Leaving the pigment actually in the tread. Now I think that's all I need to do to the tyre. I may change my mind later on, but for now, these wheels are finished. So I'm going to tackle the blades next. I knew when looking at the parts in the box that they looked a bit dodgy. There's something not right about them. So I'm just going to round them off. Once I'm happy with the shape at the top, I should use a bit of Tamiya tape just to create a template for the other two blades. Now it was only after I applied uh, the black paint to the blades that I realised that the rounded shape of these blades is wrong. There should be a slight wedge shaped angle at the top. But you'll see when I come to apply the yellow that I've had another go at the top of the tips. Now to create a bit of wear and tear, I'm going to use a wet toothpick, also wet the surface of the blade and just try and pick the yellow paint off. Now I messed up here, I left that yellow tip paint to dry too long. This technique works best when the paint is still fresh. So because I've left the paint too long, I may end up taking some of the black off underneath. Now to weather the rest of the blade, I'm just going to use a greasy finger for the leading edge and then for the trailing edge, I'll use a grey or white pastel. Last thing I've done with the blades is use a dry toothpick and just mark the surface slightly. So I just want to say a quick word about these uh, cowl pieces or quarter panel pieces, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they're, they're beautiful. But what I was going to yak about was that uh, I cut these out, cleaned them out, and then I was just going to test fit them, see whether there were any issues. And I'm not joking, for an instant, I thought I was building a Tamiya kit. It's absolutely beautiful. Not a lip, gap, anywhere. What an exquisite fit on both sides as well. I have to go for a lie down. So I'm back from my lie down. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is probably going to be a waste of time, but that's the story of my life. You can see here I've masked off a certain area, 
This is what they call the dog house. I'll be painting this a wood color because it was all made of wood. Once that's done, I'll mask that off and then paint all the metal bits, AK's extreme metal aluminium. I think it's matte. The idea behind this is that uh, when I paint the final colors and wet sand them, hopefully these colors may show through. It may work, it may not. With both those applications totally dry now, I'm gonna add the primary colors. For the Azor Blue, I've used these two colors to make a mix. For the Midstone, these two colors. And then for the Dark Earth, these two. These are the primary colors. I did add a few other colors. I messed around a bit. So I'm sorry I can't give you the exact ratios and the other colors that I've added. But these are the base colors I used to create these mixes. So I applied the Azor Blue first. And while the paint's still wet, I'm just gonna pick areas of wear and tear with a wet toothpick. I need to do this now because once the Tamiya paint's dried, it's gonna be harder to do. So this needs to be done while the paint's still soft. So the blue undersides have been masked off and you can see where I've penciled in the demarcation lines. This is just so much easier rather than rubber necking and seeing where I'm going as I'm painting. I can just concentrate and follow the pencil lines. So I'm gonna add the midstone color, but what I've done is I've created a lighter mix of that mix. So I'll apply that light mix, and then once that's dried, I'll apply the midstone mix. I shall do exactly the same with the dark earth. I'll apply a lighter mix of that, and then the dark earth. The idea behind it is, is that maybe that lighter color will show through underneath when I sand it, to give you that sun-baked faded look. We shall see. So both those colors applied, I'm just gonna peel a bit back just to make sure it looks reasonably okay. Yeah, that looks okay to me. So I'm gonna take all this off. So while the paint's still fresh, I'm gonna go around with a wetted toothpick and pick certain areas of wear and tear. Now for this particular hurricane, which I chose very late on in the day, I'm gonna to have to create my own roundels, fin flashes and code letters. Yippee. Luckily, I've got some good plan drawings of this particular hurricane with the roundels and code letters. So the first thing I did was blow those images up to the required scale. And then I've used those to cut out my masks. So you can see here, I've done my fin flashes and my roundels. I'll do the code letters separately. After I've done this, the first thing I do is place the actual inner circle on the wing on the fuselage. This is to make sure I've got the position or the location, whatever you want to call it, right on the fuselage and the wing. Once I'm happy with that, then I can add the surrounding mask over the roundel. So the first car I use is white. Yellow. Then red. And finally the blue. So all the mask can peeled off. The colors look right to me and the positions look okay. Next thing to do is the code letters. So for the code letters, I've used strips of Tamiya tape again. Ideally, if you're doing this, it doesn't bother me, but ideally you could do with the Tamiya sheets. It's probably far easier. You can see I've squared everything off because the key with these code letters is making sure they're plumb. The spatial awareness around the roundel and between the code letters is fine, it's sussed out. I've used the drawing for that. But the actual location on the fuselage, I need to make sure everything's plumb. So that's why I've squared off this mask and hopefully use some of the panel lines to make sure I've got this positioned right. You see I've cut the roundel out, which will be the same size as the one I've just painted. So that should help as well. I've got to mention earlier that I've used custom colors for the roundels and fin flash. Even the white, I added a hint of grey just to knock that brightness off. Even the code letters, even though they should be white, I'll tone down a bit. On some hurricanes, the code letters were grey, but on this one, they are white. Now peeling this thing off and placing it on the fuselage wasn't easy. It's not something you can take off and reposition easily. You hopefully get it right first time. So hopefully with that round will cut out and me squaring off the mask, and lining up with some of the panel lines, I'm hopefully got it right. If not, it's Agony City. Now when applying this off white, I've got to make sure that the paint's reasonably thin 
but not too thick. I don't want it splattering everywhere. The Tamiya white is quite opaque and I've got a dark background to cover. So the key here is thin light layers and letting each layer dry. So what I'm going to do next is let this paint dry for at least a day, maybe two. Then the next thing I'll do is a light wet sanding of the whole paint surfaces. I'm just going to quickly mention the trumpeter decals that come with the kit. It has been said that on the rounders and the fin flash that the red's too bright and the blue's too dark. I can see that. Also that the code letters shouldn't be white. I don't know why. This particular hurricane may maybe the the, the grey colour because hurricanes had grey code letters and white. But what I'm trying to say is that I was seriously considering using the decals. It's only because I didn't like the two options that were supplied in the kit. One was very garish and one was very basic. No code letters whatsoever. That's why I went down the route I did. So to me personally, they are usable. But it's down to you, whatever floats your boat. Although saying that, if you look at one of the stencils, it says first ard. I bet it was. So now I'm going to wet sand the surface. You can see where I've gone with the toothpick to get down to the silver bits. Perhaps a bit too much. I'm hoping a wash will hide most of that or tone it down anyway. Now the whole point of wet sanding the surface is to give me a nice finish. But also I'm hoping those lighter color browns that I added earlier on will come through. And I also want to make sure that the silver on the leading edge comes through as well because they would have been well worn down to the metal. You can see here I'm using some Tamiya tape just to give me a hard edge. Now the key here and the golden rule is less is more. It's so easy to go overboard. The other rule is because I'm wet sanding the water will hide a multitude of sins. You can be going at it and before you know it you're going down to the plastic. So the rule is, light sand, wipe it dry, see what it looks like, and then go over it again, very lightly. If you're gonna give this method a go, experiment on a gash bit of plastic. Don't be practicing on your pride and joy. So I think I've finished. I've given the whole surface a wipe clean. Now it doesn't have to be too clean because there's gonna be no varnish applied to this. Once again, you can see why I use the Tamiya tape to give me some defined edges. Once again, less is more. I don't want this looking like a patchwork quilt. And it's so easy to do that. So the next stage, I'm going to add a wash. I'm going to use a Flores wash, dark dirt. I've thinned it down a bit. So I'm just going to pick out the panel lines. I'm not going to give this a blanket wash. I find if I do this, I keep the area within the rivet lines nice and clean. So I've wiped that clean and let it dry and I'm reasonably happy with it. There'll be a few areas I need to go over again and I may use a Flores black wash for certain areas just to give it some contrast. Next thing to do is to get on with the cannons. So I'm just going to show you what you get in the kit as far as the cannons are concerned. I've already assembled the internal parts that fit within the wing. Once again very basic detail for a kit of this size. You get two options with different types of recoil spring. But as we can see with the upgrade, we're light years ahead in detail. So as so far as the springs are concerned, I'm not going to paint them. They look good as they are. But the other parts, I'm going to paint satin black. Now this is a straightforward assembly, but the tolerances are very tight. The slightest bit of paint on these surfaces and they won't fit. Last thing I've done is pick out the detail by rubbing some graphite dust on the surface. Next, I'm going to tackle the soot stains from the chute holes. I'm using oils, using black 
with a touch of burnt umber. Once again, a very thin wash. And once again, I'll build this up. So I'll start off very lightly and then using the cotton wool bud, just blend it in, going in the direction of flight. I'll add some more, let the oil go off slightly and do the same process. And I'll keep doing this till I get to the shade that I want. I don't want it too subtle, but I don't want it in your face. So I'm gonna try and recreate the exhaust stains next. And on the hurricane, they were extremely filthy. What I should be doing is using oils, a bit like I did with the Tamiya Sky Raider. But once again, I don't want anything too overbearing visually, which it would be. So I'm gonna go for pastels. I'm gonna use a black and gray, mainly black. And then with a stiff old brush, just build up the color, so far as I can with a pastel. I'm going to add a bit of interest by using a bit of cartridge paper just to create some edges. And then once I'm happy with that, over the top of the black, I shall use a bit of grey and a bit of white. So I've added a bit of filth, but nothing too distracting. Uh, one thing I forgot, I'm sure one of many things I will forget, are the walkways. I should have done these before I applied the wash and definitely before I applied the exhaust stain, but hey ho. Now I usually use Tamiya tape on the larger scale kits, place it over the top of the panel line, and I use a toothpick and use the recessed panel lines to pick out the shape. Peel it off, cut it, and I'm just gonna double check that it's the right shape. So the Tamiya tape has been given a couple of light coats of black paint, left overnight to dry, and I've just used some tan pastel just to tone it down a bit. Place it in position, voila. I might add a bit more weathering to it, but other than that, it's done. So I'm gonna assemble the blades on the rotor hub. Now the blades have a pin in them, so you can locate it on the hub, so it's the right position. I assembled the hub which means that I can't feed the blades through now because the pin's in the way. So I've cut the pin off and I've marked on the hub where the pin hole is. All very unnecessary, but it's the road I went down. Don't ask. So, it should be all downhill from now on. That's tempting fate. I'm gonna start off with a tricky bit, which is the aerial cable and the mast. Talking of the mast, I had to add a bit of plastic card, a little wedge shape at the top here. I think it has a pulley where the cable runs through and into the fuselage. So I'm using this stuff, and the trouble with this stuff is that it doesn't like super glue. Go anywhere near it, it must be the heat that makes it all curl up. So it's all about tensioning this stuff and then adding the super glue, which I found very tricky. The exhaust. And now those cannons. Those cannons were a good investment, if that's the right word. They really add something to this hurricane. Now for the main undercarriage, I've added the bottle and the copper pipe. If you want to go overboard, there's loads of piping detail you could add from this bottle. Now the main undercarriage fits okay, but one of the struts is a bit tricky. You've got to feed it through the brace. So there we are, finished. What can I say? Bit of a curious egg maybe? That engine area baffled me. Supply an engine, but only show a little bit of it. Maybe that was a blessing because the engine wasn't up to much anyway. If memory serves me right with the old Airfix 124 scale hurricane, they supplied a lot more detail in the engine area. A lot more panels could be removed. And I think there's more detail in the cockpit area as well. The detail may have been soft and in light blue plastic, but there would be more of it. 
That said, and I've said this before, we must be thankful that Trump to bring out kits like these. A range of Spitfires, a range of Hurricanes, a range of ME109s or BF109s in 124 scale. What more could you ask for? It is what it is at the end of the day, simple as that. So I think it builds into a reasonable kit. With a bit of effort, you can end up with a great Hurricane. So I hope you like the end results. I'll take a few pics. I want to thank you for watching and I do hope to see you for the next video.